Welcome back boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about an accessory that you absolutely need on your CNC. Whether it's in a Onefinity Elite or whatever, if you don't have a tool setter on your CNC, you are missing out. This thing it makes such a huge difference in your workflow. It speeds things up. It takes all the guesswork out of it. And in this video, I'm going to carve a little plaque and show you how it works. Uh, trust me, you'll be glad you watched this video. Let's get to it. Okay, with this little plaque here, there's going to be six tool paths, which you can see over here. And we're going to be using four different bits. Uh, we'll start out with a 1 8 inch downtown Juni, and then we'll use uh, a 3 16 end mill. Then we're going to use the V-bit, 60-degree groovy genie. And then we'll finish up with the quarter-inch compression genie to cut the whole thing out. And I forgot to mention earlier the reason my voice sounds so deep and sexy is because I'm just getting over the China virus. So, yeah, my second time in three years. So, yeah, wasn't too bad, but still sucks. Anyway, let's get to work. All right, so we've got everything set. Now all we have to do is send it over to the Masso. So here's my file I just saved. All I have to do is take it and drop it over here. Masso link. Then hit send file. You can see the progress right here. And you can see it over here on the Masso as it loads up. All right, there it is for the tool setter video. We're going to load that. All right, let's get to the CNC. All right, so I've got the first bit loaded up. Now we're going to home. It's just going to go over there and do this little home and dance. And then it's going to come back over here to the tool setter. Measure that bit. Boom. Just like that. And it'll do that automatically after every tool change. So, yeah, you can't beat it. That's why I love this thing so much. So now all we got to do is get the carving. Now I just press the start cycle, Let's go measure again, make sure, and now it's just going to go to work. That's the end of the first tool path and the first tool. <clears throat> oh. Bring it forward and put the next tool in, which is the 3 16 inch end mill from IDC Woodcraft. My buddy Garrett Frome, he makes some awesome bits too. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this down while I'm here too. Yeah, I'm 
I'm still not graceful at this tool changing. So much different than the Spoko. It was definitely the Shapoko that taught me. I had a Shapoko Pro XXL. And it came with a bit setter. And once I discovered that, I knew that I would never have another CNC without one of these jokers. All right, so we got that done. Let's go measure it. All I did was push cycle start. Measuring that bit, it's gonna go over here and go to work. That was bit number two. And I think it goes without saying, I put in extra bit changes in here just to demonstrate how much simpler it is when you have a tool setter. bit is the 60 degree groovy Jenny. Probably my most used bit in the shop because most of what I do is signs and plaques. But V bit gets a whole lot of use and it's hard to wear one out. Usually I'll drop it on the concrete and break it before it wears out. That always makes me happy. All right, let's go measure the Jenny. Again, all I did was push the cycle start on the Masso. I've got the depth on all of these cut as 0.04, so I'm not going very deep. That's what she said. <laughs> And I'm sure you can see my table is shaking pretty bad. This is something I definitely am going to have to address. This is my Craig bench. And 
I haven't did anything to help stiffen it up yet, but that's one of the next projects. Here's a neat little trick I figured out. When you put that little wrench on your spindle, you can prop it up there. That gives you some support while you loosen the nut with a big wrench. You don't have to have four hands to do this. Put that boy on there and prop him up there. Get our big wrench on there and snug her up. Now let's go back to work. We're going to cut it out and finish this thing after it measures that bit. <laughs> it my friends and it's just that simple thanks to that little boy right there that's made by steve dash at dash made woodworking he's in texas i'll have a link to his etsy store in the description below go check him out Just learned a new trick from my buddy Steve Dash, who made the bit setter. He told me how to set my masso up so that when it was time for a tool change, the spindle, the Z would go all the way up and then it would come forward. Let's watch this. It just finished that make believe tool path there. Now watch what it does. Comes right on top of the bit zero that I changed my bit. It'll drop right down and uh, measure it and take off and go on about this business. And here's how you do it. You go to your F1 tab, double tap tool changer. Top of the list there says manual tool change. Double tap that. And in here you just Put in the coordinates that you want for your X, Y, and Z, wherever you want to change your bits. 
I set mine up to stop on top of my tool setter, just like you saw in the uh, video a few minutes ago. This is awesome. And I've been trying to figure out how to do this. I've asked several people. I couldn't get a, a good answer that would work for me. Well, this is it. So thanks again, Steve, man. This, this is another game changer. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're thinking about getting a tool setter, uh, maybe this video will convince you that you are on the right track. You'll never regret getting one. I promise you that. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, leave them below. I always reply. Uh, and thank y'all for watching. And please, if you haven't already, give me a like and a subscribe. I'd sure appreciate it. Thank you.